I want you to know, I don't live in fantasy land. I'm well aware that animals are suffering and dying just because we're here on the planet with them. We build homes through their habitat. We pollute their environment, destroy their habitat. Is there a reason we have to maximize the suffering and maximize the cruelty and the death that they already endure by eating them on top of it all? You want to talk about pouring salt into somebody else's womb. 98%, and I repeat this stack, 98% of animals who are abused and killed on this planet are abused and killed by the meat, dairy, and egg industries. This is where all the harm is taking place. And in America, from birth until death, each meat eater consumes around 3,000 land animals and thousands of other marine animals. Those are USDA stats. And I seem to think a lot of people eat animals because we've all been told that humans are carnivores. We're omnivores, we're meat eaters, and we're supposed to be doing this. Are you aware that physiologically, the human body is actually 100% herbivorous? Plant eaters. The length of our intestines are somewhere between 7 to 13 times the length of our torso, our trunk. That's the same length of all herbivore animal intestines on this planet. They're very long. But the length of the intestines on real meat eaters, hyenas, coyotes, bears, tigers, and lions, only three to six times the length of their torso. They have a short intestinal tract so they can push through quickly decaying and rotting animal flesh, animal protein, cholesterol, saturated fat, trans fatty acids, which is why it is impossible, I repeat, impossible for any genuine meat eater to ever clog their arteries. Never happens to a real meat eater. What's the number one killer of humans who choose to eat meat, cheese, milk, and egg? Heart disease from clogged arteries, atherosclerosis. Humans and other herbivores, we sweat through our pores to cool ourselves. We don't pant like dogs and cats and lions to cool ourselves down. No claws on the human hand. Claws are a trademark of the carnivore and the omnivore. We have carbohydrate digestive enzymes in our saliva. Only herbivores possess that, meaning we're supposed to be eating tons of carbohydrates like fruits and vegetables. Our teeth, broad, short, blunt, flat, just like the teeth of other herbivores. And before somebody blurts out, hey Gary, what about these canines, dog? Most of the herbivores have canines, incisors, and molars. It would not be possible for them, for us, to be eating hard fruit like apples without those teeth. Our lower jaw goes from side to side in a grinding, chewing motion, like this. We grind and chew when we eat. If you grind and chew when you eat like you all do, you are an herbivore. The jaws of carnivores and omnivores can only go up and down, vertically, rip and swallow. There's no chewing, grinding, side to side action. And I'm a fair guy. I mean, if somebody out there truly believes that humans are meat eaters, I'll give you two challenges to prove me wrong after class, and please do so if you want. I want you to go outside and locate a squirrel on campus. And when you spot that squirrel, put that carnivore speed into effect that everybody has it. Chase that squirrel down, pounce on him, and catch him in your mouth. No tools, no weapons, no cages. No one's allowed to be a cheater and a fake carnivore with this challenge. And when you are done killing the squirrel in your mouth, be my guest, eat the squirrel. Eyes, nose, face, toes, tail, anus, inner organs, blood, fur, and don't forget about the brains. You don't get to pick and choose which body parts you want to eat, and you don't get to cook it either. If people want to be real meat eaters, I'd love to see people eat raw flesh from the bone down to the bone and nothing left but the bones day after day after day. And challenge number two, find a two-year-old child. Place the child in a crib. In the crib, put two things, a live bunny rabbit and an apple. 
If the child eats the bunny rabbit and plays with the apple, send me an email. Would you let me know? Because I'm going to come back and buy everyone in this room a brand new car if that happens. <laughs> Benzes and Beamers, leather interior too. In fact, next time I'm at Georgia Tech, if that happens, I will eat a steak sandwich in front of everybody, chase it down with a chili dog with extra cheese, a bucket of ice cream, and a bag of beef jerky too. <laughs> And I'll take the jerky and I'll put it in the ice cream. You need to let that. Now I would not hold my breath on these promises. Not that I won't fulfill them. I'm a man of my word. But those things cannot and will not be happening because humans also possess zero carnivorous instincts. Zero omnivorous instincts when we're born young and growing up. We're all born vegan. We just acquire a taste for meat, cheese, milk, and eggs after they're forced down our throats during childhood. Now, all I'm asking you to do is something normal and natural anyways. Eat what comes from the earth. Every vitamin, mineral, and nutrient that exists, protein, calcium, iron, potassium, all the B vitamins, they have an original source and it ain't the animals. You are aware that people eat animals after the animals have already eaten from the earth. People eat cows after the cows eat up the grass, some of the soil. Then we ship to a feedlot, feed them most of our corn, wheat, oats, and soy. Then we take more of the corn, wheat, oats, and soy, shove it down the throats of pigs and chickens and turkeys. Stop filtering your nutrients through somebody else's body. It's illogical and irrational. Go to those sources directly, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, legumes. These things cannot harm you, cannot cause a disease, and more importantly, they harm no one else in the process. But when we consume what walks, what flies, and what swims, that is abnormal. Where does everybody think diseases come from? Broccoli? Asparagus, kale, collard greens, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, peaches, nectarines, grapes, bananas, avocados, onions, tomatoes, cucumbers, spinach. And in case anyone's wondering about those pesky little E. coli salmonella contaminations a couple times a year with the vegetables, let's keep in mind the one and only source of E. coli and salmonella, shit. Human shit or animal shit. Spinach doesn't shit. <laughs> Broccoli doesn't shit. Peanuts don't shit. Let's stop blaming the plant products when there's an E. coli salmonella contamination. That's the fault of the meat-eating society. Why? Well, meat-eaters want billions of land animals to eat, so we have to mass-produce billions of land animals. Keep in mind, this has nothing to do with God. Nothing to do with evolution anymore. This is a business. This is Smithfield, ConAgra, Purdue, Tyson, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, KFC. That's why we have animal agriculture classes in college. So when we mass produce billions of land animals, they have trillions of tons of manure. That stuff gets in the waterways, then there's runoff onto the crops, or they're putting feces contaminated water directly onto the crops. But all of our main diseases, heart diseases, heart attacks and strokes, most of the cancers, prostate cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, kidney disease, diabetes, osteoporosis, high blood pressure, obesity, asthma, four main factors that cause them. Now, I know about other factors. I'm not saying that you can't get sick elsewhere. Of course you can. Smoking, drinking, stress, <coughs> chemicals in the environment, high fructose corn syrup, Twinkies. I know about the other things that can lead to an ailment, but the four main factors are found inside of meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. Cholesterol, saturated fat, trans fatty acids, animal protein, and I'll repeat that last one that nobody wants to hear about, animal protein. But when you go vegan, did you know that you eliminate cholesterol entirely from your diet? You can only get cholesterol from meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. And your body makes cholesterol on its own. That's the only such thing as good cholesterol. If you bring it in from an outside source, it's automatically bad cholesterol. 
you can take out around 95% of saturated fat when you go vegan, and you can take out all the naturally occurring trans fatty acids too. Keep this in mind, between 2 to 9% of all meat and all dairy naturally comprised of trans fatty acids. And you can obviously take out all of animal protein. Now, animal protein is way too acidic for the human body. We don't process it properly. It is the main reason why one in three meat eaters continually get cancer. And it's one of the main causes of osteoporosis. Were you aware that when animal protein enters the human body, it makes our blood acidic instantaneously? But our blood can't stay acidic for long or else we die. So our body has to figure out instantly how to neutralize the acidity. Has some good news and some bad news. Let's start with the good. Our bodies have figured out how to neutralize the acidity. Bad news. There's only one way to make it happen at this point. With phosphate. There's only one source of phosphate in the human body. Bones. Just so you know, our bones are comprised of two things. Calcium phosphate, and they're binding together. So our body leaches calcium phosphate out of the bones, takes the phosphate to neutralize the acidity, and then we pee out the calcium. This is why every single epidemiological study, those are the ones done on human populations, every single one shows that societies that consume the most amount of animal protein have the worst rates of osteoporosis, bone fractures, and cancers. While societies that consume little to no animal protein, the vegan and vegetarian ones, Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, Rastafarians, Seventh-day Adventists, have little to no rates of osteoporosis, bone fractures, and cancers. And so we don't get into a debate during Q&A about different medical studies that are out there. A lot of times when people know I'm coming to class in advance, or they'll spend a few hours online looking up studies, print it out, wait for Q&A, and go, hey, Yurofsky, I got a study here that contradicted everything you told us today. What's up with that? Well, here's what's up with that. You don't need a medical study to show you what people are dying of. But for the record, every study you can produce showing that humans need meat, cheese, milk, and eggs, I'll produce two. Two to one ratio, showing that meat, cheese, milk, and eggs are responsible for every major disease. But we all know medical studies can be manipulated either way. So even though I got a heavy two to one edge on this, I say toss them all out, because you don't need them. All you have to do is pay attention to this meat, cheese, milk, egg eating society that we all live in. So how many of your family members and your friends' family members have the disease already or have died already from the disease? Because I can't be the only one affected by this. My grandfather died from a heart attack, my grandma died from a stroke. My uncle Jack died from a heart attack. And last October on the 15th, I got a call around midnight that my father had just died from a heart attack. My mom, she's got asthma. My stepdad's got heart disease so badly he takes seven pills for breakfast. My best friend Darren, four of his aunts and uncles have died from diabetes. His ex-girlfriend Rita has breast cancer at 40 and she's dying. Just found out a few months ago that his current girlfriend Dion has ovarian cancer. And yesterday my girlfriend just found out that her father has prostate cancer. What's the one thing we all have in common with each other besides the air we breathe and the water we drink? Meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. Animal products all day long. And I know you can blame some of the cancers on environmental pollution. There's no doubt about that. But how are you going to blame heart attacks and strokes on environmental pollution? And diabetes, osteoporosis, obesity. Here, I'm going to break this down for you in a couple different ways today. I'll show you what's killing people. And I'm going to show you who's lying to you, too. Flat out, bold faced lies. Let's come to an agreement on the dairy industry. And let me know if I'm being unfair with this. I want to know. 